everyone welcome to another episode of talk to rami i'm very excited today because i'm here with arjun rai he's the ceo and founder of hello woofy a platform that we actually using in our digital marketing and they are doing amazing he's a hardcore entrepreneur big hard giving guys and you know in a fully fully well well cooked entrepreneur arjun yeah. welcome to the show my friend Thank you, thank you, and uh, such an honor to be on the show as well. Um, hopefully, I can help out uh, some of your members. Uh, we call them the underdogs, right? The entrepreneurs, as yes. small business owners. Uh, so, looking uh, looking forward to uh, being a resource. Absolutely, thank you so much. First, tell me a little bit about yourself. The the viewers sure. or the listeners they want to know who you are, where you came from, and you know how you become an entrepreneur. How did you decide to do this? Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, um, it was all about helping small business owners and as many uh, entrepreneurs, underdogs as possible. Uh, but I started at 15, 16 years of age with my first startup. And it was mostly because I had a crush on a girl that was in the radio class. Wow. And uh, and so I couldn't join the radio class. Was, there was a wait list. And so I joined the radio club. Uh, we didn't work out, but I ended up falling in love with uh, things like this, you know, ca- talking to people, having yeah. uh, Headliners, you know, clickbaits, you know, titles and copywriting and all that stuff, uh, having a show and, you know, conversing. So I ended up launching a, a show when I came to university uh, um, called The Biz Den. I ended up working on an ad tech company in high school, an ad agency in college, uh, raised about a million for a software wow. product to you know, helps agencies uh, collaborate. Um, I would say we were way too ahead of our time uh, because eventually what we what we built, you know, eventually looked like uh, Monday.com, but it was way too early. Um, and so then uh, I was like, okay, there has to be a, another solution for small businesses. And I realized that the entire, you know, career, if you will, I mean, I started at 15. Most people are like, yeah. that's not a career. But, um, you know, social media marketing and marketing in general was very time consuming, very uh uh, very, you know, we didn't go to school for digital marketing. Let's just put it that way. And so with, um, with Hello Woofy, I said, you know, let's build something that is truly a one-stop shop, one-stop shop solution for small businesses to be able to schedule to multiple channels. We currently do four. We're going to be doing five by the end of this month, uh, or early next, uh, you know, and eight by the middle of the year and nine by the end of the year, uh, end of this year. And so we have, you know, imagine being able to take one message, right? You got your title, yeah. you got a description, you got your media file with like an image or a video and be able to schedule it to your direct mail. A postcard. Uh, a lot of real estate agents, wow. you know, still do direct mail, and that's how they get their business. Uh, Google Web Stories for SEO. Most people don't know that you know there are little things that appear in Google search on mobile called Web Stories that uh, only the big companies are using, and there are millions of these coming out every single month. Um, you got smart speakers. There's an Alexa speaker in front of me. There are another ten in my house. They're but they're half a billion in the world, give or take. Most people don't know, and this is kind of like the growth mindset versus the poor mindset said that yeah. if you keep consuming you're in the poor mindset if you don't produce and create then uh, you know if you are doing that then you're in the growth mindset and most people don't realize that in smart speakers you can broadcast and so if you ask for the hello wolfy skill or the hello wolfy app you'll see me with my briefings and my links to drive to our traffic to our website uh, text messaging com- community development platforms like discord blog newsletters and of course you know the tried and true social media and so that's where we're building today and we have a couple of other products as well we can talk about later but at the core of it is all about supporting entrepreneurs and you know underdogs and you know I, as my understanding because i told you we, we use a hello Buffy in our digital marketing company we are very happy with it i think with the way you guys are going you're creating that infinite like an ecosystem mm-hmm. that we can plug in everything that will include any businesses or personal even you yeah. know the digital visibility through the tools and everything else that you guys yep. are plugging into it, which is a good thing about it is that it's very flexible and easy to do that. Yep. Where is where is the next phase? Like, you know, as far as the building that ecosystem, there's a lot of exciting things coming in or how can like for the speakers, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> um, for, for, 
as I mentioned, there are a lot of emerging channels that most people don't even know that they can schedule to, right? And so yeah. we want to be the universal scheduler. Think of it like the Uber or smart marketing. So that's that's the main platform as Hello Woofy. We've also built something called self tag, which is selfies for contact. One of the things I realized is that whenever I was going to conferences, I was taking this little device called an, an iPhone or it could be any phone yeah. and taking selfies. Like I would be like, hey, nice to meet you, Bob. Nice to meet you, Lisa. Nice to meet you, you know, Sarah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. we were take selfies and then i'll be like here give me one second let me open the notes app and add your contact information because i want your name your email your phone number and where we met so i have some context and obviously i know that as soon as you add the information it chronologically you know puts it in a sequence downside is that the image then has to get copied into the notes the other downside is if i make any changes by accident let's say a month later chronologically the thing gets moved up to the top and i lose where i met that person chronologically because it's just it's not designed for networking so what we built was essentially um, a, a selfie app that you take a selfie, it, it flips the camera over, um, it flips the, the photo over, and you can add your details, the name, email, uh, contact information, you, where we met, all that stuff, and then click save. And from that point on, it'll email the person with a message, it'll text them with a message, plus the selfie is attached to it, and you can book a call and you know hit me up on LinkedIn all in one second. And, wow. and it drops a pin on Google Maps. So if you're looking at Google Maps all over the country, you can actually see where we met uh, individuals across the world. Now, all of a sudden, networking became so visualized. Uh, one of the other things that we realized, and I would attribute about fifty to $100,000 in investments and, re and revenue, is responding to comments on our Facebook ads. Now, if you go to HelloWolfie.com, it will retarget you. So you'll see this anyways in, in the advertising on Facebook. If you go in the comment section, 90% of the ads are me using the Facebook app and responding to a person in video format. You only get 20 seconds, so you have to, you know, we try to keep it very short. And it could be like, hey, Lisa, great question. If you want, uh, you know, this is what you know we can do for you versus our competitors. Click on the link below. We'll do a free demo for you at no cost, and we'll show you the power of smart marketing. And so this, I kept doing over and over again, hundreds, thousands of videos, and we're now going to be building a comment responding app that automatically will do it with a library of videos responding to the same questions. If the same questions keep coming up, with a link, with an FAQ article, whatever you need, it'll automatically do it for you. Um, one of the other things that we're building or have built actually have the prototype on my phone is again no goggles no glasses uh, there's a vr goggle somewhere here behind me uh, i'm very bullish on uh, augmented reality and if you've heard about apple and with extended reality or xr yep. um it's basically augmented reality but it has the ability to, for you not to be like secluded in your own little world and completely like uh separate from the from that route from reality we actually end up building using the iOS AR kit uh, and also um, uh, uh, Unity. We end up building something that allows you to essentially turn your immediate uh, surroundings into a presentation for the purpose of scheduling and showing uh, your content. So imagine if you're an agency owner and you want to bring, let's say, you know, Sarah into the meeting. She's 5,000 miles away, but she's paying you to create content on the left side. And you can see this demo on our YouTube channel. On the yeah. left side, you'll see all the content that's ready. Uh, we call it the library and on the right side you can see the timelines for your social media scheduling or blog scheduling or whatever and so you know if you want this content to be dragged over here she can do it or she can you know you can do it yourself in front of her and be like okay sarah i'm gonna put this on march 22nd at 9 a.m on instagram i'm gonna put this over here on april 1st wow. at you know uh, for pinterest and twitter at 11 a.m and you can literally just move these blocks around i grew up watching lego so this is like building blocks for me and all you need is a phone, which everyone has. You don't need goggles. You don't need anything. You just have to turn your immediate five feet in front of you, five feet around you into a display. It's going to blow everyone away in terms of what your content is and how you're going to be scheduling it. There are a lot of interesting products that we're building, again, for the underdog, the small business owner. Yeah, and you, how you guys, you adapt to these constant changes, because I know you use a lot of other third parties you know, the platforms or APIs and all this stuff. As you know, the AI is coming, which is everybody talking about the chat, GPD, all that stuff that yep. you start integrating to everything. How you guys are going to adapt and just keep going forward with the power to keep actually your yeah. power and 
how, how, the, how you guys do that? It's a great question. So we actually built some of the technologies that are now coming to you know the forefront uh, years ago. So if you Google me, my name, Arjun, Rai, and Woofie, you'll yeah. see there are three patents. Two of them are fully issued. One is just allowed, which is a legal term saying it's about to be issued. Um, and uh, one of them is all about autocomplete. And so we took four different al- four different algorithms and we combined them together to give you the best words, the best emojis, the best hashtags, and emojis being the most important part of that sentence. Because according to Adobe, emojis drive 50 to 70 to 80% uplift in engagement and purchase intent. So we literally wow. took billions of permutations to figure this out for you so that you don't waste your time over emojifying your content or under. Um, so, so we actually, we were way ahead. Now, the other thing we built, the second patent, is around similarity engine. It's called a compliance engine in our platform. And if you, you know, when you use Hello Wolf, you'll see that there are a bunch of numbers in the library that gives you percentage of how similar something else. The reason we did that is because Twitter, when they came out, I believe in 2019, they said similar content will not be allowed or duplicated content will not be allowed on our platform. And it says part of our terms and conditions. None of our competitors took any action, meaningful action, I should, I should say, to um, separate, them, to separate yeah. them and, and it warn you from shooting yourself in the foot why because if something happened they have really close ties with twitter but you don't and so you would be in the in a position of maybe getting blocked or shadow blend or whatnot so we said anything over it changed over the years anything over 80 percent, anything over 90 percent is not allowed and you just we would recommend to you what changes to make you know a couple of you know hashtags here emojis there different words here and so to answer your question we we knew that GPT-T was coming out, but the issue was plagiarism. And it became quite a bit of an issue in the early days of GPT, uh, GPT-1, 2, 3. And uh, Google actually came out, about, I think, about a year ago, and they said um, they're spending a lot of capital, a lot of money to figure out if you're plagiarizing or if you're building content automatically as robotic and has a certain degree of plagiarism in it. They're going to down play your content in search results and if that wasn't enough i was like this is exactly what i was proving i I knew would happen years ago so how are we going to introduce gpt so we are going to be introducing uh, chat gpt and chat and gpt3 and and g4 is on the way now into the platform but it's going to be sitting on top so this is our technology is going to be sitting on top of it but what's going to happen is when our our users create anything that's artificially uh, you know generated we will not allow you to post it as is 100 percent so that's where the similarity engine comes in. You will have to make changes that we may recommend or you may you know, include as well into the blog posts, into the newsletters, the postcards you're sending out, the social media posts you're doing, the blog, the smart speaker posts you're doing, uh, the text messages you're saying. We will not allow you to post exactly what the chat GPT or GPT-3 technology spits out. And that's for your own good as well as our good um, because we always will protect our APIs, our platform, our customers, and our partners. Um, but again, most small business, uh, most of our competitors that are catering to small business or urban enterprises, they don't care. They're just going to let the entire internet be pl- plagued with a lot of robotic content. And it's unfortunate, but we're going to stand, you know, stand our ground. Yeah. I just heard today that there are, uh, there's something out there. They call it AI checker or, you know, something that it will check the plagiarism. And I kind of agree with you when you go and chat GPTs. I tested it, to be honest with you. We, 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 yeah. Me and my writers, we were thinking, and it yeah. does a great job. But mm-hmm. when we plug it into the AR checker, it was 99% was fake. And, wow. You know, you- that's that's pretty high. I, I was just going to say, we just scheduled, uh, I actually generated something about updating your bio. And, in, and it's on our blog right now. And it... I would say about 50%, 60% of it is exactly how it came out in chat GPT. And then I said to my team, make sure you add your intelligence into it. And 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 then we posted it through Hello Wolfie through our WordPress channel. And uh, it's going to come out in newsletter as well. But that's, that's the approach you have to take. Like, you can't just... Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good to kind of cook the ideas and, mm-hmm. you know, go with mm-hmm. it and help, you know, get the help and run yep. with the ideas. But at the end, you have to get it and put yeah. your own thoughts and your words in it yeah. that makes it unique. I think you cannot, I tell everybody, like everybody's saying that all the writers, they're going to lose their jobs. No. I said, I don't think this, so. 
And this is why I love history because every 50 to 100 years you have the same conversation and yeah. none of us are none of us are alive long enough at least yet uh, that's another conversation um all oh, also reincarnation i believe in yeah. that um to really think about how history repeats itself because this conversation happened 120 years ago give or take when the model t came out and people were like oh all the horse buggy mechanics are gonna le- lose their job and everyone and anyone who's intelligent or had the foresight right to to think into the future would have started taking any course any education any knowledge transfer they could get from the initial mechanics who built the model t right they they would have made a killing in terms of the the knowledge that they could have then disseminated to being the first model t mechanic in town or the first automobile mechanic in town because they knew where the industry was going uh there's actually a lot of tiktok videos now coming up as well and it says Essentially, you're, if you're spending 10 hours uh, of your time in grunt work and you're charging your clients uh, that meant that much time, you, you know, the margins are very thin in, in terms of yeah. what you could be making. Right. But imagine trying the client the same amount of hours. But the quality goes through the roof and you have your own intelligence, your own background, your own expertise on top of it. You're able to juice out more of you than just brunt work. Um, it's just going to make you move faster. I mean, yes, you can drive a horse, but you're going to get a lot faster there in air conditioning and heating when you have a car. <laughs> yeah, I always tell everybody, I, I, I don't know if you agree with the social media or other tools. There are tools. Yeah. You can have a knife, you can cut the watermelon with you mm-hmm. can you can kill somebody with it. It's up to you how you're going to use the knife. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, a social media is another tool or, you know, how we're going to use it to chat GPT or even information, AI, yeah. you yeah. know, all that stuff. It's up yeah. to us yeah. how yeah. we're going to use it. And, and that's agree with that? absolutely. And it's, it's just it's not only it's about tools, but access to information. Um, if you if you think about evolution and everything we do I, I i'm always i tell my team like we have to have an impact on where civilization is going not just where our business is going but where human humans are going um you know my eventual goal is to be in space have my own business in space um and and right now the little impact we're making is all about civilization how how can we push small businesses into the future entrepreneurship into the future and those tools you're referring to they just get us from point a to point b faster yes now with you know for example electricity when we had everyone had access to electricity we were able to stay up all day and work right like versus candlelight uh when we have access to the internet um we're very fortunate in the united states uh, and the developed world to have access to information without censorship and that's a political topic but i think we're we can yeah. all agree that we have a better life than most uh asian countries or most african Absolutely. countries where there's a lot of censorship what happens when there's censorship and lack of access your gdp is the lowest or one of the lower ones uh, than the developed world your people are not free to innovate and and build and take a look at a country like russia people oh, yeah. are leaving the talent pool is draining because people want freedom and they want the ability to innovate and build and take risk and not have all of it taken away from them in a moment's notice uh, with, uh and from someone that thinks you know they can and that's where it comes to access to information and freedom uh, one of my my investors tim draper he always talks about freedom it is the most he's a billionaire and he's the one that's the one thing that he always talks about is freedom to do whatever you want within reason then you have silicon valley then you have silicon alley which is where we are um and and obviously a bunch of places around the world are trying to copy that access to information but because of what you said i think the landscape of entrepreneurship is changing yeah. too oh yeah like, for sure yeah well, yeah we see it in austin uh, now i mean austin this is the second silicon valley yeah. a lot of startups moving down here yeah 800 i Tesla. think a month or what Tesla, Apple, Google, they're all mm-hmm. here, plus a lot of smaller startups that, I, yeah. you know, the VC is talking about. But what you said about the freedom is something that they come here because they don't have it like a state tax. Yeah. You know, that, that yeah. freedom they give them. That, that and also, um, I think technology is just evolving to the point where we can introduce new things. Like, uh, we're... Right now in 2023, we're talking about smart speakers, but smart speakers have been around for uh, like a couple of years now. I remember the first tower. I think I have the original tower right here. This is the, this is about six, seven years old. This is the original one. Um, and wow. the, the issue, the issue is really 
hardware and software and uh, connectivity uh, as well. You know, back when that came out, I think we had like 3G, 2G, um, maybe maybe 4G connection. Um, uh, you know, with the pandemic, my entire neighborhood had to be upgraded to business level internet connectivity because no one, there weren't enough people back, to the, you know, before the pandemic working from home to Good force, handle, yeah. yeah, to force the, 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 you know, the telecom companies to upgrade. And now they're all forced to upgrade to fiber optics or, uh, Starlink, for example. Like civilization just got forced, you know, in a certain way to evolve in a good way because of, uh, the forces at play. And I think the more more hardware gets cheaper and more powerful, the more software gets cheaper and more powerful with artificial intelligence. Uh, and of course, broadband, internet connectivity, and all that stuff becomes more accessible. You're going to see some very interesting things. Uh, one of the things that I love to read is the white papers that people have come up with for Star Trek. Uh, huge Trekkie fan. And if you think about it, a lot of the things, I would say about, I think it was like 70% of the technologies displayed or talked about in Star Trek are either already developed or in laboratories. And, you know, we're just a few years away from uh, getting out the door. Fusion being an example yeah. of a recent uh, development. And they also talk about universal uh you know, uh, ability to transfer uh, currency and eventually they get rid of the currency altogether. That's Bitcoin. That's it's, whether it's Ethereum, Bitcoin, whatever. It's it's a universal protocol where you don't have to be at the at the you know the beck and call of a you know central bank. You can do whatever you need, uh, obviously with good intense intentions across the world with anyone in the world and have commerce. Is that kind of a future that we're heading into? Is 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 and it's really exciting. For over the next 50 you know, years. The thing is, as you, you said, is the underdogs. Yes. I believe that the small businesses are backbone of this country. Oh, yeah. And I see a lot of them that they do not understand really how they have to grow as technology mm -hmm. is growing. And mm -hmm. I keep telling them, you got to educate yourself. Like you got to grow yeah. as technology is growing, as you said. How, we, how they can do that? What do you think they should do? They just need, they need a... First of all, they need access to inf information and connect connectivity, and that's the most basic thing. Um, because if and of course your you know basics needs to be covered. Because if you're if you're hungry and you're not able to think straight, like that's that's your first thing is you know provide for your family and find the basic uh, you know Maslow's pyramid of needs. Um, the next thing is. Uh, Make I was just listening to Shade Zara. She's a TikTok influencer, and she said that in, in her actually video today, she said that you're more likely to succeed um, uh, when you see someone else who has succeeded, right? It because you can almost emulate them. You know that the the path is there. You know the beaten path is 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 there, and it just it hit home because you know I've been looking up to Elon Musk for such a long time. In fact, I was like 15 minutes away <laughs> from talking to him, and his PR agent had to take him away. This was back in high school, and so I know he's already done the things that I want to do. It's so much easier for me to see how I want to develop and grow and and take risks as well. Uh, small business owners have to do the same thing. They have to find the champions in their local community. It could be the parents who are encouraging, you know, like their kids to start businesses. Um, you have to have that like innate, you know, desire to always be improving and and developing yourself. My my mom actually she passed away a few years ago, but okay. we wouldn't be in the U.S. We wouldn't be in the U.S. if she didn't have that desire, that ambition to constantly be pushing forward. Uh, so she would actually apply on my dad's behalf to jobs and you know push him to apply to other you know opportunities from india and finally one one thing you know came through and he did the interview and he did really well and he came in he came in 95 to the us my mom and i came a few months later and or a few weeks later and the rest is just history like we made it but you know my dad was happy more than happy to stay in the in india with his lifestyle but my mom was always you know pushing forward business owners just have to have that innate desire to develop like if you're going to have a lemonade stand i always tell my friends who are like how are kids going to be raised in the future i was like if you're going to have a lemonade stand for your kid right your kid's going to have a lemonade stand make sure it accepts bitcoin it has exotic flavors like lavender and rose and what like saffron whatever like it make it unique make it so cool that any other lemonade stand doesn't stand a chance like that that just starts from the personality and encouraging people at, at a young age 
That's differentiation point. What is your yeah. differentiation point? Yes. Like that. But as you, I'm so happy that you mentioned you're an immigrant entrepreneur. I should consider you as an immigrant mm-hmm. entrepreneur. Like myself, I was born in Iran, came here in 1993, washing dishes, pizza, all that stuff. And I feel you, man. I feel you. What yeah. is your advice is for this? You know, a lot of immigrant ent- entrepreneurs that are overseas. I know so many of them in India, yeah. in Iran, it's different countries. Yeah. They all want to come here. And because of what? You just said that. That freedom, because especially in Iran, they don't have that freedom to in, innovate and just come here to, and they won't do that. What is your advice for them to not giving up? Because you didn't give up. I didn't give up. Yeah. We got here. However was it, but we got it. But what is the hope? Part of it is just time um, because the countries, you know, that are at question today, they were some of the most beautiful free countries in the in history. At one point, I was looking at photos of Afghanistan, you know, from the fifties, and Iran from the seventies, and it wasn't always like that. Um, yep. And and so I think what ended up happening is with the Soviet Union and you know post World War Two or even with World War Two, people were really civilization was really shocked with how we can turn on each other or a group of people and the governments that can follow and the laws that makes no sense around it and and some people just ran with it and and kind of embodied that in their own home countries and took away what the country would you know was known for um i think it's just about time you're just gonna have to let the you know my parents generation my grandparents generation just eventually just by natural um evolution just you know go away and I think you're seeing the young generation and their teens and their 20s uh, take a look at China, take a look at all, all you know what's happening in in so many countries. P- Iran, you know, a lot yep. of women, young women in Iran are stepping up, and they're like, yep. no, enough is enough. So it's just about time, actually, at the end of the day. Um, and the other thing is, uh, again, education, access to information. Um, you know, the more we get that into these people's hands, the the better they're going to be. I mean, I think there were some, there were like stories of how the CIA or the U.S. government in it would drop like like Western movies and Western like you know pamphlets or influence, or, yeah, influence, right? And it wasn't it wasn't a it wasn't uh, like a propaganda per se. It was more about this is what a world could look like if you take a stand. Um, this is what you can do for yourself. And, and I think that's going to continue happening. Um, I do believe in conspiracy theories and all, I know everyone keeps saying, Oh, the government's hiding aliens and technology and whatnot. Um, I don't think civilization as we stand today is ready to understand, to know that there's aliens around the world, uh, around the universe and whatnot. I think it's a step-by-step prog- progression. If you listen to Star Trek, you know, when they made first contact, you know, civilization was ready for a contact. Otherwise, the prime directive was in place. The prime directive for non-Trekkies is you don't make contact with any civilization that hasn't achieved a certain kind of engine for warp drive uh, for traveling space. And, you know, when humans had achieved that, then the Vulcans came in and made first contact. I think we're not at that point yet, but I hope so in the next 50 years that we, we get to that point um, and we can all evolve and help each other. Yeah, I think there is a lot of unknowns out there that we do not as a human will not understand. Yeah. And talking about that, and I always tell the entrepreneurs here, okay, now you are immigrant or whatever, and you are on entre- Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur today. I don't know. That's mm-hmm. the, like a COVID, it's a disease. <laughs> Every- Everyone's <laughs> from freedom. That- Everyone wants, maybe, maybe I say yeah. it wrong. Maybe everybody wants freedom, but freedom yeah. as a cost. What do you think oh, yeah. the cost of Tell freedom? What is the prerequisites of the freedom? You know, what, what, yeah. what you have to do in order to, you know, you, you fell, you fell a lot. You face a lot of diversity. Mm-hmm. You fell a lot of disappointment. We mm-hmm. all did, but you still here and you kicking it and you making it and you growing very fast. And what, what did you do? What was the prerequisite? What, how did you handle it? That's the question a lot of people want to know. You just need a warrior's mindset. I, I was, when I was younger, I would always say to myself, you know, I would always travel light. I, will, I, would, I would, you know, do everything very light because if I had to move in a moment's notice, I was ready to do so. I didn't have so many roots uh, where I, you know, where I'm standing. And, uh, that survival mindset really helped me survive the first 10 years, uh, in New York for sure. Um, and before that in childhood, but 
you know, so, so long as you have that mindset of a warrior and being able to, you know, put scraps together and survive, the next thing is just having really thick skin and having a trench mindset that you're going to be in trench warfare for a very long time, but you're not going to give up um, having, you know, the ability to, uh, no matter how many setbacks you have, you know that every time you set, get, you know, fall to your point, you get back up. You know, it doesn't matter how many times you fall. If you fall 10,000 times, uh, get back up you know, 10,000 one time. Um, and that's what's been our, our story. I mean, we, we were on the verge of, you know, going under, I don't know, dozens of times. And all of a sudden a miracle investor showed up, uh, a wow. loan showed up, you know, revenue took off. Like, uh, at this point, I always, I know that money is, you know, money comes easily and frequently and, uh, the good people come to us easily and frequently as well. And I've noticed the, the closer I'm getting to making a, like the wrong decision, whether it's professional or uh, personal, even in my dating life, uh, some some way of miracle, uh, the person just goes away or something happens and that opportunity goes away. And, and once I look into it more, once I learn about it more, it turns out that was it was it was a bad decision that I was about to make. And thank God I made a better decision and I took a better choice. Um, so long as I believe in the universe and the law of attraction. And so long as you have that vision board, have those mindset, that mindset, everything happens for a good reason. Even if it's not positive in the moment, it's net positive over, over, over a period of time. And you like Steve Jobs said, connect the dots looking back. Uh, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can't plan yep, out your whole life. Like even if your parents think you need to do this, this and this, and then uh, MBA, whatever, like F that, like just, just network, meet people, build a collect, you know, collective of entrepreneurs and like-minded people around you. And you never know, they might become your customers, your business partners, your investors in the future, or just good friends you can fall back on. Yeah, I have a, you know, I have a philosophy in life. I will I always tell my friend that I never chase money. I never chase love. I never chase friends. It goes away faster. Work, yep. If you work hard and you put your mind into it, mm -hmm. as you said, and yeah. surround yourself with the good people and you learn from them, the money will come and you yeah. work hard. Yeah. If somebody loves you, they will come to you and you love them back. If the friend wants to be there for yeah. you, it's going to be there for you. Don't chase them. You lose them. And that's, that's all it is, you know? And yep. I totally believe it, believe it, what you said that, you know, you got to have a really that, you know, tough mindset and then go through things, but most importantly, grow through it yes. and learn from it. Otherwise, you know, what have you done? Nothing, you know, yeah. you're just going to go and learn and do it again. And finally, you're going to succeed. You know, I was in that situation too. Yeah. And then just surround yourself with growth mindset people. Um, someone once said, I can't remember who it is, uh, said, show me your five friends, show me your closest five friends and I can tell your future. Yep. Um, and I, I wish I knew who said that it was probably someone famous. And I always think about like, who am I texting? Who am I calling? Who am I hanging out with? Um, cause I'm okay by just being alone. If I have, you know, no one comes to mind or no, you know, schedules on a line. I'm happy to be by myself with, with my dog, um, you know, just, just by the fireplace and thinking about the next big thing. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I, whenever I get that vibe, you know, from someone, you know, that I just met, like a great intellectual mind, very passionate about what they're building or doing, but there's also a vibe. There's a very like specific kind of spiritual connection there. Then, you know, I hold on to those people and, and make sure I nurture that relationship. Uh, otherwise, 8 billion people on the planet, you're bound to find yep. someone else. <laughs> yeah. Anybody come, my, my mother always tells me that anybody comes to your life, son, there is a reason. Yeah. We cannot explain yes. it's good or bad. If it's a bad, you're going to learn something. If it's good, it's, it's going to be good for you. And you, you're still going to learn something. But God put people in your life, business yeah. or friends, for a reason. It doesn't matter if they're wealthy or poor. Or what is yep. it, their social status? It's just there is a reason. And I, I strongly believe that. Like I have met people yeah. that, oh my God, changed my life. I had, I had a story, funny story. I ended up meeting someone at uh, a program I went to for entrepreneurs that uh, Tim Draper was running called Draper University. Yeah. And I don't know what it was about this person, but I ended up connecting uh, with her very spiritually. And all of a sudden we were like best friends and, and we, we kept talking over, over, we went to several conferences together, several events together, and she's building her own startup. And we 
couldn't figure out why we were feeling this like sense of like connection from like a past life and we basically concluded we probably met each other in a in a previous life at some point because as soon as we started talking it was like you know talking to an old friend like a friend that i've known for 50 years or so and we could you know talk about similar things we could connect on similar topics uh the energy the vibe was there like it was just so weird and uh I don't think I can remember any other situation where that happened. And I do believe in reincarnation and, you know, uh, multiple lives and, 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 and the universe. And, uh, we basically concluded that we met before and we're like, one of the, you know, very close to that today in terms of, uh, just fellow entrepreneurs and founders. That's, that's great. And my, you know, final question, I know you're Mm -hmm. busy. I gotta let you go, but where the hell the Wufi goes? That's the most important question for today. Where are you guys going? Because you guys are really doing good. Yeah. It's totally different with other, like a social management sure. platform. I don't call it social manager. I tell my staff, it's a digital marketing ecosystem yeah. management that you trying to, where the hell the Wufi is going? So I, I like to call it a community automation or community okay. development, you know, management platform. Because at the end of the day, just like a financial portfolio, you want a marketing portfolio that's diversified. And so, yes, we do social automation. That's how we started. That's the majority of our revenue today, uh, which, by the way, we reached almost a million dollars in total revenue. So wow. Huge, wow. huge uh, milestone Bravo. there. Um, and uh, and then, of course, we do other channels as well, emerging and whatnot. So at the end of the day, it's all about community development because, yes, you can post everywhere, but for what purpose? You're building a community and nurturing it and getting leads from it evergreen. Um, so that's that's that. The original Hello Wolfy name came from supporting underdogs and small businesses. Where we're going, I mean, if I had a magic wand, I would love to be listed on NASDAQ. Uh, I always look at our competitors, uh, one of one competitor specifically that grew 8x during the pandemic. Um, I was like, into a billion, multi-billion dollar company, I was like, they have no patents. They only do social. They are now focusing on enterprise. They are not focusing on small businesses. If we had the same metrics, we could be doing really well. Now, of course, everything's subject to change. This is not financial yep. projections or whatnot, but I think it, you know if everything lines up, we can have a very solid business in the next three to five years that is worth billions or more um, because we're looking to tackle every every small business owner's biggest issue, which is getting their time back and automating their community beyond social media, not just social media. Yeah, I believe that's going to happen. And I say that because you're not only a great entrepreneur, I know personally, and you are an amazing person with a giving heart. Thank you. And believing that I was reading it a little bit about you, but your beliefs are amazing in the, in the actual life, you know, the and the, you know, spiritual life and other stuff. Sure. And overall, you know, how we live in today's, yeah. you know, kind of hectic days in life. And that's that's very rewarding. And yeah. I wish you the best, man. And, you know, I'm sure we're going to chat if I come to New York differently, I'll give you a call. Totally. We're going to have a, we're going to have a coffee and everything. Yes. yes. Uh, you know, we do that, but I'm always here, but we are loving your platform. Thank you. Hello, Wolfie. We're using it every day. We're adding to it. And it's a, it's a, it was the best thing that happened to our company, to be honest with you. Oh, thank you. And, you know, that. and we, we really love it. But I wish you the best of luck, my friend. And for the great future, salute to you and what you do. All right. Virtual hugs from New York City. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Take care.